Lists in SharePoint are a great way to collect, track, analyze, and share data within and outside of your team. For example, we're starting here on the sales and marketing team site in SharePoint. They happen to have a list already called product list where they're keeping track of all of their products, code names, product lines, product types, and colors. Some people use lists to track vendors or clients, locations, contact information, or it could even be forms like travel reimbursement requests or anything where people need to submit data and that data needs to be processed and organized. With this product list, if a new item needs to be added, the users of this site just click on new and then fill out this form and click save. List items can have documents attached, but the primary piece of data here is just data, whereas with a document library, the primary piece of data was an actual document. So documents are optional in lists. Now we can also do bulk edits, just like in a document library, by using edit in grid view. When you click on edit in grid view, it converts a list into a, kind of like an access or an Excel-like experience, where you can use your arrow keys to go through different fields and make changes. You can also do copy and paste using control C and control V on your keyboard. And you can also do drag to fill just using the handle, just like in Excel, use that lower right hand handle, drag that down and make bulk changes. So a really quick way to work uh, kind of like in a, a database kind of format, just by using grid view. And when we're finished, we click exit grid view. So also in list, we can sort and filter, which helps us find what we're looking for a little bit more quickly. So for example, if you're just interested in particular product types, you might click a column header and choose to group by product type. And this shows me that I have so many of each type of product. I can collapse all of those sections to show me three action cameras, two camera accessories, two car audio, so on and so forth. Or if I'd rather not group, I can always filter. So notice right above group by, I could choose filter by and say, I only wanna see digital cameras and apply. Now I see our three digital cameras. So we'll keep learning this about lists as we go here through the next few lessons. Uh, but let's go to our homepage on this site first and create a list from scratch. From our homepage, we can click on new and choose list. And it gives us a few options here. We can start from blank, meaning just one column. We can import existing rows of data from an Excel worksheet by using from Excel. And by the way, this is the only method to import existing data other than just simple copying and pasting. Uh, you can use from existing list, which is a great way to copy the structure, the columns, and the views of an existing list and not have to redo all that work. And then we have all of these templates from Microsoft. So down at the bottom, you can see some ideas for using lists, such as tracking issues. And some of these, you know, they seem like they're geared towards a specific thing, like IT issues, perhaps in this case, or HR employee onboarding, but they're just starting places. So anything that you have where people submit tickets or request you might be able to start with issue tracker and employee onboarding, even though that's kind of like a traditional HR thing, you could think about any process where you have people who have requirements that need to be checked off or specific tasks that need to be done for each person. Okay, and then just some other ideas here, event itinerary, asset management for check-in and check-out and just tracking a uh, life cycle of um, anything, assets or digital assets. Uh, recruitment tracking, travel requests, so remember we can use lists for forms basically work progress tracker and content scheduler. So let's take a look at the travel request template here. And notice that this template comes with columns like trip title, reason for travel, who's the requester, where's the destination, and then some date fields, you know, for starting, ending, as well as some choice fields for airline and conditional format and included in an approved column here. Let's go ahead and use that template. And we'll, we'll leave the name as is travel request, but you could rename it and add a description and I'm gonna to choose to add it to my left-hand navigation and create. All right, so now I can see travel request on my left-hand navigation menu, and I've got my blank list ready to go. Now again, I could use edit in grid view and just go left to right, but with a form specific process like this, I'm probably actually gonna just have my users use this new button and do one form at a time. So let's go ahead and submit a travel request. A user of your site would come here and click on new, and they'd put in their title, maybe it's gonna be SharePoint Fest. They put in their reason, maybe it's Adele who's requesting this, and it's gonna be in Seattle. Notice that is a real location field, so as you're typing, it's looking on Bing to find actual places. We've got our start date, we'll say it's Monday, and it ends on a specific day. And I'm just making some generic selections here. 
we'll put in some numbers and we'll skip hotel, we'll put in some more numbers and we don't want to approve our own request, so we leave that unchecked. Maybe we attach a specific form or a receipt or something, our proof of registration and then save. All right, so we've got one row of data. So of course one doesn't look too impressive, but at this point we could integrate this with Power Automate to start a formal approval process. Um, and we can get pretty advanced with this to make sure that Adele only sees her requests when she comes to this list. It's a bit beyond the scope of this particular lesson, but this is just where we get started. We created the list and we created an item. Now, if you're working on this request, let's say you're one of the recipients and you have to uh, start this process of approval or reviewing the request details, you can click on the title field of any item in a list and it opens up that form again. So now maybe you need to adjust the duration by changing the dates or you need to change the airline because something happened with the original booking. Or you could even have like a sideline conversation here where maybe you at mention someone else on your team, such as Patty, and I'll say, Patty, can you please approve this request? So I sent Patty a notification and then Patty can come straight to this item using the link that she gets in that notification and change approved to yes. Now, sometimes these templates aren't gonna come with all the fields that you like. For example, maybe you don't want destination or maybe you don't want one of these columns that you see here. So for any column that comes with a template, you can just drop down the column header, choose column settings and edit. From here, I can change anything such as default options that came in a choice field, or if I'm sure I don't need this column at all, I choose delete. And when you delete a column, just keep in mind it deletes all the data that exists with each item that used that column. Um, and that includes version history. So all previous versions of an item that had data in this column you're deleting is gone as well. So we'll delete the destination column. There we go. And let's say we needed to add another one. Perhaps our specific process requires a certain uh, answer to a specific question, or we need to select a budget code or something to that effect. So if that's the case, we go to the far right of our list and choose add column. And notice you can choose from a whole bunch of different types of columns here. Some of the most common are gonna be choice, where you can drop down and make a selection or choose multiple options. Date, such as due date, assigned date, trip date, something like that and people, and people connects to Active Directory, just like requester, so you can type in the beginning of someone's name and select them from a list. And it's also a live field, so when you hover over their name, you get a contact card, where you can start a conversation, go to their LinkedIn profile, get their contact information, see the reporting structure, and any files you might be able to collaborate with that person on. So let's add a date field to this list. I'll choose add column, date and time, we're going to call this approval due date. Okay, and I just click save and I've got my new column. So now let me just hit refresh real quick. When people submit the next form, they're going to have that extra field on their list approval due date. And they can just click inside there and select a date. And notice the destination field that we deleted is no longer here. So you can customize that form uh, however you want, but we started from a template, right? So it made it a little bit easier. Now, as we start working more in list, we can start uh, creating views, which are kind of like a report. So for example, you might have a status column and you wanna see approved versus denied requests or approved versus denied products that you want to incorporate into the collection. So in that case, let's add a column and we're gonna make that column a choice column. And we're, we're just gonna call it status. And our statuses are approved, pending, and denied. And our default value is gonna be pending. So when someone adds a new item to this list, it's automatically pending. And I click Save. Now I wanna go ahead and update all of the items that are in this list uh, now that we have a new column. So I'm gonna click inside of Status and maybe all of these have already been approved or maybe some are still pending. So I just make those selections for existing content and I'm just doing some bulk edits here. And we'll go ahead and do some denied as well. And we'll leave some blank. So I'll exit grid view. I've got all of these uh, statuses for a lot of these items. And now I can use that new column and its properties to make views. We'll learn more about views and columns and different things that we can do from like a reporting standpoint in the next lesson. Now, similar to our document libraries in OneDrive for Business and of course SharePoint, we can select items and have specific ribbon menu options for each item in this list. 
So notice when I select this Game Controller 3300P, I can edit that particular item, which is the same as clicking on the title field to open up that form. I can comment on it, which is again the same as opening up that item and having a sidebar conversation here, right next to the edit field. And I can copy links. Now this is going to sound really familiar when we talked about uh, sharing in OneDrive for Business, which is the same as sharing in SharePoint pretty much. Some of your options may be slightly different depending on your organizational settings, but for the most part, OneDrive is going to be just like your SharePoint sharing process. Now list items, since they're not documents, are a little bit different, where when you click on share for a particular list item, it looks very similar at first until you click into the settings where we don't see uh, some of the options like blocking download, uh, since that doesn't really apply to a list item. But for the most part, you can see the exact same link types are here, even though in SharePoint one may be disabled that was enabled in OneDrive for Business. And when we share one particular item, we can allow editing or make it view only. So let's pretend in this scenario, we want to send this product detail to somebody in our organization who is not a member of our site. Maybe I don't want them to make changes to this list item, so I uncheck allow editing, I leave the link type as people in my company, and apply. And now I can just copy that link and post that on our intranet or in a Teams message or to a specific uh, email distribution list perhaps so that people can go and review the details of this particular item, whether or not they're a member of this site. And rather than share one by one, if you want to share this whole list of requests or a product inventory or whatever the case may be with someone else, again, inside or outside of your team, you can click share at the top of the list. And this allows you to choose someone like, let's say, Joni, who doesn't work in our team. I'll choose Joni. She can edit the list even. And I'll let her know uh, that she has this access now and click grant access. So now Joni can come just to this list, can't get to our other site resources, but can modify anything in this list. Now sharing a list has a little bit different permissions than uh, a particular item. So for example, when you're getting ready to share, if you drop down the pencil, notice you can give full control to the list. So absolutely everything in the list can edit the list, which includes columns and views, or more commonly, you're probably gonna share can edit items, ed, add, or remove items, or just view only. So more of like sharing a report with someone perhaps. Uh, but those bottom two are probably the most common unless you really need that more immersive collaboration experience with someone. But otherwise, everybody in your team, the, the 20 members in this case that are part of my team, don't need to be given additional access because they can already edit everything in this list and create views and columns and all of that. And similar to our document libraries in SharePoint, we can use the ellipsis to create our own alerts. So perhaps we'd like to know whenever a new item is added to this list. Similar to our document library, we changed that alert title, and I'm going to call it sales and marketing dash product list. I'm a, I only want to know when new items are added, but maybe it's when things are changed too. So maybe I want to do all changes instead, but I'll leave this one as new items are added. And again, I want to go with a daily summary. So daily summary and OK. So very similar to a document library in that regard. Now let's get another option kind of along that same uh, line of thought where we can use the automate option at the top to create rules. So when I click create a rule, I get options like let me know when a column changes or a column value changes or a new items created or an items deleted. So let's say I do want to know when someone deletes an item from the product list. Maybe I need to follow up on that or there's a process that I'm involved with whenever we decommission a product um, or whenever a travel request is deleted because maybe it was denied. Uh, so when an item is deleted, send an email to, and then this can use any person field that's in the list. So remember when we added a people column to another list, that could have been an option that we use here. But so you simply just click inside of the field and choose that person field if it is here. Otherwise, your default options, if you have no people fields in your list, are yourself, so you can notify yourself, or whoever created the item in the list or last changed the item in the list. You can also just type in one person's name or email address if they should just get the alert no matter what. So that wouldn't be dynamic like created or modified by would be. So in this case, I wanna be notified because again, I may be involved in the process that follows the deletion of an item. So I choose me and create. 
All right, so we created an alert, we created a, a rule, and then to go even more advanced, we can use the integrate option, power automate, and create a flow. And this allows us to send customized emails where we control the messaging or start approvals, where maybe it's a travel request and we need to uh, make sure that's approved by a person's manager. Um, and that's all done through automation, so we don't have to be so hands-on with it. We don't have to share it individually or anything like that. Uh, but there's tons of templates to get you started. So be sure to check that out. Then one more thing for list, just like with your document libraries in OneDrive for Business and SharePoint, every single thing that you create in a list has version history. So for example, as I was making changes earlier and making these particular items approved after I added that column, there was a new version created. So every single change that's saved creates a new version of that item. So I can select this particular item, go to its version history using its ellipsis menu, you can also find this if you just select an item and use the uh, ellipsis from the top ribbon and then version history. Either way, it does the same thing. And then I can see this particular item has 12 versions. So I could go all the way back and restore the original version if I want to. I could delete one of the interim versions that perhaps has sensitive information like a credit card number that shouldn't have been entered, right? Or I can just view. If I want to compare, maybe I choose version six. I just click on the timestamp and it shows me what were all the values in the field at that particular version in time. So that's a brief intro to list. We've got a couple more lessons here that are going to involve list, but the main thing to remember here as we move forward into these next couple lessons is that lists and libraries are very similar. The, the views and the columns and different things that we're going to be doing in a list, you could also do in a library and vice versa.